I am right outside my old high school. Uh, I was invited to speak to the uh, COSA and Clinical Rotations program just for students who are interested in healthcare. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Mark Velasquez. I'm a uh, recent graduate of the University of North Texas uh, just a few days ago. I, I like making videos of my medical projects, making vlogs, travel vlogs, and uh, make sure to hit this, uh, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay updated and stay tuned in. So this is how I'm gonna come in. I'll do sign in. So it should come in, turn green. There we go. And right here. Yep. So all here. I'm gonna this off this. Where I worked in, in Little Rock, across the street, was the ad line of attorneys, and I was like, "Oh, do y'all want me to be like a foster parent?" And they're like, "No, for the Marina. <laughs> you would take them." That's the bell. Um, class is about to start in like five minutes, so I'm just glad I'm here. Just looking around, I'll look at all my classrooms. Oh my gosh, it's such a crazy experience to see but I'm glad I'm here glad I'm able to get back uh, yeah just gonna be talking a little bit in a few minutes where we'll all hang out. Libraries right there, courtyard area, buildings, multiple buildings. Hello everybody. Um, so raise your hand if you're interested in becoming a healthcare profession. Can you put it? Okay. Alright. Who here has an idea that they want to be a nurse? Okay. PT? Thinking about it? Dentist? Ops? Optometrist? Okay, and physician, MD or DO. Okay, all right, someone's here, okay. So uh, I know for me, when I was in high school, I, I had an understanding that I was still figuring things out. You know, I didn't want to have everything figured out. Um, and with that, I think uh, here, especially in the clinical rotations program, I got to have an understanding of where, what direction I was working towards, everything like that. So um, yeah, so, you know, my name is Mark Velasquez. Um, I'm a graduate from the University of North Texas. I graduated Plano Senior here at 2019, just three years ago, and I'm, I'm glad to be speaking to y'all. Just a little bit about what I did after high school, uh, a little bit more about my college experiences, my timeline from everything from my graduation day to everything that I'm up to now. And I want to give you all a few, a few tips. Maybe there's some misconceptions that y'all have of being a pre-medical student uh, that y'all have beliefs on or you've been told by other people. We just want to get things straight, clear out the, the uh, everything that's daunting to y'all. So, uh, yeah, with that, I'm glad to be here. You know, here's uh, my, my email, markb0123 at gmail.com, and my Instagram. And this is just a header for my YouTube. I have, uh, I like to make videos, share my life, and everything. And I sure to share my journey with you all. Uh, and I'll, we'll circle back to that. I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn if y'all want to connect, everything like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Why did, you're probably asking why, why did, you know, Miss Miller, Miss Kongs ask me? Come speak to y'all today. Um, for most of y'all, uh, just like you, I, I grew up here in Plano, Texas. You know, I uh, went to Thomas Elementary uh, back in 2006, and then I, I transferred to a preparatory institution for the next nine years for my uh, education. Then I decided to ret return to PISD, Clark High School. You can see there, I was part of the uh, basketball team. I was captain of the basketball team for the sophomore uh, team there. I had Coach Nuttall uh, as our coach. Everything like that, and as more that I got to be engaged, be involved, I really got to appreciate uh, the, the diverse cultures, being able to see everyone, uh, how they were brought up, and that led me to just further my engagement and to be uh, more involved. So I really took into heart my high school experience. You know, I went to the Plano uh, high school games, did the P-Town chant at the football games. Uh, that's me and my friend. He also went to clinicals too. We uh, waved the flag, blew the horn everything like that and uh, yeah graduated at the star uh, in June of that year 2019 this is me here with the class president Sam the lot uh, back in 2019 um, this was our honors graduation our honors ceremony where we got to uh, receive awards and find out who our valedictorian salutatorian were 
managers horsing around. And further that, I what I took into heart my senior year is that I was part of HOSA as well. I competed in medical photography. I, I have a passion for uh, just having things with the camera. And I won first place. Uh, at, we had a competition at Plano East and uh, went to uh, San Antonio for that. There's an animal right there. Uh, me, Miss Miller, and a few other students, we went to the Riverwalk. We stayed at the Marriott there for a few days. It was just a great time to relax, chill out. And uh, you know, we had a boat ride on the Riverwalk. And then most importantly, I really took it to heart being a part of the clinical rotations program. Most of y'all uh, here today, I, uh, when I went to Clark, I took medical terminology with Dr. Uh, Timothy Sullivan. I got an understanding of what the program was like. And then uh, I didn't take principles that year, so I decided to take it my uh, junior year in uh, with Ms. Jacob down the hall. And from there, I did it with the purpose to apply for the clinical rotations program. And I uh, was fortunate to be a part of it. And it was just me, us at Brookhaven doing our hours for CNA. Um, and everything like that. So that's just what I want to talk about today, what I got from the clinical rotation program and why it's led me to where I am today. So yeah, with my clinical program experience, you know, most of y'all may have done a, a scrapbook uh, earlier. You know, I'm living proof that that doesn't go away. These pictures, these are memories. They are something that I hold dear to you. Um, it's a way for, for you to tell your stories and everything like that. So I'm glad that when I was looking, putting this presentation together that it's just uh, really more heartwarming to me. So as you all know, when you first started, well, raise your hand if you're a junior. Okay, oh, most of you, okay, all right. That's usually, and the seniors, okay. So I was pretty uh, non-traditional too. I was a senior in clinicals one, so I never got to be a part of clinicals two or uh, further going. If I knew a little bit more if I could do that in my junior year, then I would have done that my senior year as well. So uh, with that, I uh, when you first come in, you know, when I first came into that first day of school, you know, we had our uniform checks, you know, do you have your notepad? Do you have, is everything tucked in, you know, hair and ice, you know, all that. So I, given that I understood uh, the kind of the demand, what it's asking of me, the programs I'm with Ms. Miller talking about, you know, we are working towards a professional setting. We're gonna be interacting with professionals uh, and patients who would need our help as well. So from there I knew, you know, she, she wasn't gonna, Ms. Miller wasn't someone that's gonna wanna hold your hand, bring you to the promised land. Like that, but it's more so that these experiences, these rotations, allow you to further your engagement, allow you to experience the, these things for yourself. So, therefore, when you come out of the program, you have your own stories to share. That's something that you took meaningful for you. That's made, and that this can inspire you to further uh, go into a professional career as well. So, with uh, everything, with our simulations at the labs, you know, I, I remember. Uh, family like we had coins in our shoes we tied our uh, fingers together blindfolded blindfolded and from there we, we got to really simulate what it's like to take care of someone who's in need who has not parents who um, individuals with disabilities something like that so um, from there once we understood that preparing to take the CNA licensing exam the certification exam um, I wish I had a picture there but we all uh, me and my group we all passed and were able to uh, become CNAs and that's something I did later on and furthermore, with the clinical rotations program, I was glad to uh, shadow, shadow at a young age, be able to uh, be with physicians, be with, uh, do my fire ride outs, you know. Uh, that's me on the hard hat. We were about to go on a call for, uh, on a highway. So I just got out. I just, I know Ms. Miller says now no phones at sites, but you know, I, just, I just had to, you know, do that right there. That's it right there. Um, and I was very big with going to surgery. I was 18 years old at that time, so I was allowed to go into the uh, surgery and level one trauma centers. And I was it kind of took a toll on me, so I like uh, wanted to go to the Montessori and um, be with children, just relax, have fun, you know, and not take anything too serious. This is me with a doctor in Medical City, McKinney. Uh, he, uh, I like to take pictures with physicians or providers who have helped me or have inspired me during my uh, journey to where I am today. Uh, he, he actually took the time to teach me things, you know, break down what the medical school process looked like, what he did in medical school, and his training. Um, so, and, and just shadowing him, I know there's a funny story where he, uh, there was a nurse who reported at the nursing station uh, to him, it was like, hey, um, doc, we have a cockroach in a uh, lady's ear, and we're like, and he was like, oh, you like that music, oh, let's, uh, let's take a look, let's go visit her. So he looked in, I, I thought he was, she was like crazy, anything like that, but uh, when he looked in, the ear, he's like, yep, there it is, it's crawling around there. I was like, oh my gosh, and so I was like, I can't wait to see what this looks like. This is real. And so um, he uh, put lidocaine, just simply put the bug to sleep, and bit by bit, he just took his tweezers, put chunks out, 
and just laid it out on the, on the tray tables for everyone to see. And uh, he just like teased the nurse a bit, just like put it on the tray so they could look at it, see the, that it's real, and everything. So I thought that was pretty pretty funny. But you know, I could go all day, and we could stay here all to all all day with talking about these pictures. But I think really what it took into heart for me was that I got to be surrounded uh, with like with the training, you know, the guidance with Miss Miller. And, um, there was a Miss Mabbitt, who was also my teacher alongside Miss Miller there, who I, I really appreciate for her support. Um, everything I really do hope she's she's doing well, everything. But yeah, this is my psychology professor. Uh, we got to shave, and I think we sent out like an announcement like, hey, if, you, if you're a teacher, you got some facial hair, just uh, come by the room, your face shave. So I just had fun there. Um, yeah, messing around, learning how to use the Hoyer lift, and you know, zero, I was in zero one. Are y'all zero one? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 We, we understand the early mornings, you know, waking up. Just had to think of a quick snooze <laughs> a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm just very grateful, and that led me to you know, do more with HOSA. It's me and Miss Jacob, my principal's teacher, after I won first place uh, with HOSA with medical photography, something like that. Yeah, just me and my partner, me with the kids, me right in this very room, wearing the same uniform that y'all did. Uh, we were able to teach CPR. I think uh, I have an understanding that the more you learn, the more you also have the responsibility to teach as well. Um, everything like that. So I it really took it to heart. I, once again, took the rotations program was a very big part of where I am today and uh, the skills and the attributes that I had to develop on my own to, uh, to one day become a healthcare professional. So, so most of y'all, raise your hand if you're interested in pre-med, pre going to college, because you're being a physician. Okay, great, good hands. So, um, I want to explain a little bit of what I did and what I, what I hear today, you know, everything from the MCAT to taking, uh, going to the, doing the volunteering activities, doing what I lo still love doing, everything like that. So, when I graduated, it's June 8, 2019, I decided, you know, given the advantage that I got with getting a CNA, I wanted to just get my feeling in the word, rack, rack up my hours in the healthcare setting, you know, clinical experience. That's something that uh, medical, medical schools look at. And not just for uh, medical schools too, but if you're interested in PA, nursing, having your friends or having that work experience is something that will, will uh, allow you to have an advantage uh, when, you're, uh, when they're considering you for your programs. And then further on, I uh, wanted to expand my medical service by being a volunteer. You know, when I was shadowing, when I was observing at the, uh, at, uh, when I was a student uh, in, in clinicals, I realized and saw a medical city just down the street, like how they, uh, treated patients and I've been hearing patients say all the time like hey I love this nurse she was treating me so well I felt really at home like everything I felt so comfortable and I, I that got me uh, curious like what's going on what are they doing that that's helping like them being stand up allowing them to stand out and so I realized that my own visions and values aligned with theirs and, I, and to this day I'm a volunteer over at Medical City uh, patient representative volunteer I'm actually going tomorrow everything like that if uh, if you're a senior or maybe just uh, still around here for the summer, not going too far in the summer, uh, I encourage you all to sign up. We're looking for volunteers as well. Um, you can list my name down as a reference as well. Okay. Um, once they see your name, my name as a reference, they'll, they'll know like uh, kind of you're from Plano, something like that. So I encourage you all to, to get involved early, right after high school as well. Um, Start college in August 2019. You know, had the summer off, got to say, say goodbye to friends, um, moved in, went to my college dorm, everything like that. And, from there, I, I kind of had this feeling that, as a pre-med, I needed to just have my head in the books. No social life. Just crank it from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Just studying, planning all the time. But little I knew, I learned the hard way that that's just a recipe for burnout. You know, you need to have time to have fun. College, you know, college, you only do it once. You know, just three or four years of your life. You want to make sure you get the most out of it. You get meaningful experiences out of it as well. So. I decided to get involved. You know, I did high school basketball. I decided to do college basketball as well. It was part of a um, Filipino Student Association uh, in, uh, in college at UNT, so I decided to play there. I was the youngest uh, team player there, and I was able to feel the support of to all the upperclassmen, all that. I joined a uh, medically dedicated students organization as well. It's the pre-med org at UNT. We call it MDSO for short. I know it's, like, it takes up so many characters when I'm writing my essays about it. Um, but I call it MDSO, and I'm glad to say that I was uh, able to be vice president and therefore this past year president of that organization where I brought in guest speakers, things like that. I intertwined my passion for the camera into the operating room where uh, I got to film ACL reconstruction videos 
um, and publish it on Vue, Medi, and YouTube. Just uh, breaking down steps for the and working alongside a doctor with it, with the orthopedic surgeon. And so from there, right before the pandemic, we all do we all remember where we were in the pandemic? Just, you know, at home, feeling just not where we want to be. Um, so, I'll, fortunately for me, I uh, right before the pandemic, I was offered a position to work at Texas Health Plano. Uh, it's not clinical. Uh, I was more of registration, getting to interact with patients, but not giving them care, taking their uh, insurance, health insurance, looking at what the uh, the orders that the physician transcribed to them, and make sure it was in the system, and and allowing them to sign documents so they know that they're protected on behalf of the hospital. Everything like that. I did that for over a year, and with that, I wanted to. I was. Uh, I did martial arts when I was a kid. I did taekwondo. Went up to like a blue belt, stopped. But then, you know, got into basketball, got into all the ball sports, and I decided to come back. Um, of course, with the pandemic, you can't really be around people, so I decided to look into a self sport and martial arts. I, I got to train, uh, just be outside, and uh, from there, I actually uh, see it was really good for my well being, and I extended that to others through medicine. Um, I grew up uh, Christian. I decided to be a study group leader, Bible group leader. And for that, I just created a few individuals um, to talk about uh, the gospel and everything for Sunday mass services. And as the um, you know the world, you know we we uh, transitioned to Zoom. You know, transitioned to the uh, virtual platform. I uh, gave uh, tutoring lessons. I was a tutor for uh, students, first grade students who needed help with the reading and writing. So I was able to communicate that, show, uh, display, uh, just my affection, and, and did that for a few months. First year, second year, right there. Probably, probably cut it right in the middle right there. Um, so can, to be continued, that's my third year. Um, I was fortunate to run for a uh, position, my activity with MDSO. I was able to run for a vice president position where I offered volunteering opportunities there. I, that led me to volunteer at the Garden over at, in Denton. Uh, with every every month, the food collected that we got and fed over 300 families um, to people in Denton County. And I did a little bit of research. You know, are we uh, familiar with daylight savings time? Like, kind of what it affects turning the clock. Pretty annoying, right? <laughs> um, so with that, I when I was outside during the pandemic, you know, we had this idea that during the summer we have a lot of sun, a lot of exposure to the sun. Uh, I was hiking, I was biking, I spent a lot of time outside with friends, you know, keeping a good distance. And uh, I saw that while I was in school, I was also still completing my coursework in class. Like, although my classes were virtual, I still, like, wanted to get stuff done. I, I felt like I was into a flow state, you know. I felt good accomplishing these things, for, and I had a good attitude towards my academics. So I decided that year when we returned to school to do a research uh, activity, observational study, where we gave a survey to pre-medical students about their attitudes, about their academics, you know, with like you know, how much sun they get, and then afterward when we turned the clocks back, we forward forward, and then did the same survey again, and we saw a drastic change of their, uh, you know, correlating, you know, with sun exposure, your, the sun affects your circadian rhythm, you know, uh, good proper sun exposure, you get to wake up and go to sleep at around the same time, and you know, we understand that as students, Sleep is important. Hopefully, y'all are getting some good amount of sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe five, <laughs> six, eight hours a uh, day. So, with that, I understood that I was able to tie that in together and conclude that DST does have an impact on us pre medical students in North Texas. And I, I'm currently a medical assistant as well here. Going, this is a, the summer going to my third year of college, and I was able to. I was elected president of the org where we brought a uh, few guest speakers, Texas doctors, Texas medical students and director of admissions for a few schools as well. I'm proud to have uh, have invited over, make them feel welcome at UNT. And just about a year ago, I remember May 31st of last year, I took my fir very first diagnostic test. You know, as you all know, May here, the MCAT is seven and a half hours long. And I was able to take a half length just to see where I am. Uh, of course, I didn't get a good score, that's okay. I understood my weaknesses and my strengths and decided I knew where to prepare from that as well. Um, yeah, and then just January of this past year, I reached out to my letter writers, my professors that I had developed good relationships with, that I got A's in their classes with, and I was able to, uh, hey, I'm uh, planning to be a candidate for medical school. Uh, would you be willing uh, to write me a letter about eval evaluation for medical school? And you know, they saw who I was, saw my performance, and I got to really meet up with them in their office hours throughout my three years in college and uh, have them write me strong letters. 
I also drafted my personal statement. You know, answer why. Why did I want to be a doctor? Why do I want to go to medical school? And all that. So, um, being able to explain, reflect, I think that's it's an important component as well. And we'll get a little bit into my personal statement as well later on. Graduated uh, last last Saturday uh, at UNT. Walked the stage. I turned in my application the first day it opened. I'm, I'm such a like person. I got to um, turn it on the first day type of person. Uh, as you all know, uh, medical school is a rolling admissions uh, uh, cycle. So whoever turns it's a first come first serve basis, the more right on the first day there are interview spots. They're trying to fill those interview spots. So the first applications that they look at, they will take into consideration. Uh, and I took my MCAT last last Thursday, prepared for it for over a year. Uh, yeah, sat in uh, seven and a half hours for it. Took it. I think I believe I arrived around 7:30. Took it at 7:30, 7:45 in the morning. Got out 2:45 p.m. Um, my brain was fried. I uh, went, you know, celebrated with some friends though. Uh, had a great time. Had a big dinner. Just to reward myself. Um, yeah, I remember going into the testing center. They would like I had to frisk myself. I wore glasses too at the time. I like set it down on the table and they were like looking at it like. Does he have any encrypted thing? Is he cheating or anything? And then the only thing I could bring with me was the keys to my locker and my ID. So it was pretty like cool to see. Um, there's mics and cameras on each testing computer. So if you made a noise, they would like it pick up, and then you'd like they'd see if you uh, did something or you're cheating or something like that. And uh, yeah, we're in, like all just in a cubicle testing, just focused in. And yeah, and now present day here to y'all, speaking to y'all. So um, I wanted to cover a little bit of what. Uh, maybe there's some misconceptions or some things you assume about being a pre-med student. Uh, for those of you who may, are planning to go to college in the next year or deciding on what major you want to go into, um, I think it's very important to understand what it is for what medic, what being a pre-med is for what what truly it is. You know, you may get some advice from the wrong people, or even your pre-med advisors will say uh, other things that you can cannot do it as well. But um, yeah, we'll go in. So there's going to be a couple statements that's going to pop up, and I want you all to interact and say with, whether or not it's a myth or truth. So all ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Freshman grades do not matter. So very first year. Myth. Myth, myth or truth? Oh, myth. 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 Okay. Good. We'll circle back to all these concepts as well. You can only do medically related activities as a pre-med. Myth. 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 Yeah. Next, you can declare any major you want. True. True. Good. Right. Um, and lastly, you need a 4.0 GPA and a 528 MCAT score to get in a medical school. Myth. Myth. Great. All right. So that is a myth. So let's go ahead and bust some pre-med myths together. Uh, you know, going into from high school to college, you may think like it's all this, it's all that. You have to be perfect. Uh, you have to be that type A, type A person. You have to. Yeah, you have to cure cancer. You have to get a thousand hours of clinical experience. That's just not the case. So it's not as daunting as you may think it'd be. You know, there's a few truths you can be, you can, uh, so all your college coursework will be considered. If you're doing dual credit here in high school, that will also be considered as well, because that is a um, upper level coursework that you're taking as well. You're, so you do not have to have everything perfect for your stats. That's just a number. Okay. You're so much more than your GPA and your test score. Even think about going to college, you know, um, you're so much more. There's a story to you. That's why we write essays. That's why we have interviews as well. For jobs too. We have interviews, we have a resume. Um, you're so much more than your resume as well. So it's just one part of your application. Um, speaking more in terms of the medical schools, there's so much more than just your FAT GPA. They want to know maybe that trend with that GPA. Maybe you started off with a few B's and a few C's in your first freshman year, you know, just transitioning into college. And then slowly, as you're starting to get these higher upper level courses, you're doing a lot better. You're getting all A's, you're maybe getting a few B's here and then, that's still okay too. I know I did as well. But as long as you have an upward trend, you're still good, you know. Um, you can take, for example, someone who went to Harvard, uh, who may have gone like a 3-3. We'll say, but they also started out with a 3A, 3A, 4.0, and started to trickle down to a 3.3, compared to someone who maybe started out in a community college or a not so high tier college, four year college, but they started to show improvement as well. So that's something that med schools look at, being a holistic approach, knowing that story behind that GPA, who you are as a person as well. So as you go into that, uh, the prereqs for medical school, it's quite extensive. It's going to be about two years to complete. 
uh, it's about me three to complete as well. Uh, so yeah, right off the bat, you, if uh, it's something you're looking into, not just uh, pre-med, but pre-PA, any upper level or graduate uh, schools that you're looking into, you're gonna be required to take uh, more with, with med school, bio one, bio two, chem one, chem two, physics one, physics two, ochem one, ochem two, biochemistry, and some other level based statistics as well. So uh, believe it or not, here in the state of Texas, uh, medical schools do not require calculus. You might have to look individually to certain schools that you're looking in, into. What schools do you require that? Uh, but here, in the state of Texas, you know, tuition's good. Take it. Go to if you plan to go to medical school here or just anywhere for college. Try to stay in state. Um, money's good. It's it's uh, like it and compensating. Um, so yeah, that's about 47 credit hours in all those classes I mentioned. You can declare any major you want. So. Many people have the idea that they have to be a science major because medicine, as you all know, it's, it's focused on science, you know, evidence-based discussion, research, and all that. But that is actually not, not the case. Um, you can, there are both pros and cons, being a science major and non-science major. Uh, being a science major, you can uh, finish those prereqs. It's already guide for you. However, you may be overwhelmed. You have to take four to five science classes each semester. Um, I, for, for one, was not a science major. I was a rehabilitation major, more with the health sciences aspect. And so I got to really pace myself on what classes I took. I did uh, one to two science classes a semester, really understood where my pace was, was at, so I can really set myself, myself up for success rather than failure. So, and continue to doing the things you love doing. You know, uh, who here enjoys doing sports? Yeah, okay, art? Music, still do the things you do. You know that that does not go away. When you are in college or after high school, still do the things you do. That is your environment. That is your community. You know, uh, there was a, a famous YouTuber. I'm not sure if y'all know him. His name is Dr. Ryan Gray. He's big uh, med school headquarters. He talks about how a pre-med advisor told someone to stop playing soccer because it's not medically related. But she, but little did she know, you know, that set herself up for failures. You know, like it, you want to enjoy the process of college and being a pre-med as well. Because if you start seeing these rewards, that you're rewarding yourself for the hard things you're doing, the journey will start to be a little bit more gratifying. You'll you know, thank yourself later on for it as well. And for me, I, I two things that I love doing is, is being behind the camera and martial arts. And from there, I was able to intertwine that into medicine. And there's a few ways I did that as well. Um, so. That's a few of my pre-medical experience. I was president of um, MDSO. That's a few hundred people there over to the right. That's the director of admissions for a medical school, the director of admissions for a medical school in Fort Worth. And I was able to display like, kind of like my leadership, my public speaking in front of all those people um, so he could see me firsthand uh, then, rather than just uh, see my GPA and, and uh, my, uh, my personal statement. And that's my last speech, my very last uh, meeting where I got to say my farewell speech to everyone as I left. That is me with Dr. Ryan Gray. He's in Colorado, uh, but I was able to bring him as a guest speaker to my organization where he talked and he gave uh, a lot of good advice to everyone as well. Uh, he really did show that you are more than just your GP and MCAT. He has a video on his YouTube channel that there is someone who did get a 4.0 and a 520 MCAT score, but he did not get into medical school. Why? It's because he didn't really con convict or show why he wanted to be a doctor. In his personal statement, he did a few activities for a few months, weeks, stopped, you know, was doing other things, um, but didn't really show a true commitment to the field of medicine. Because once you're in, and once you get in medical school, you are now committed yourself to years of training, years, years of schooling, and you're dedicating your, dedicating your life uh, to the ser service of others. There's me. Uh, video, videoing, uh, filming, ACL reconstruction right there. I'm glad to say it's on, like, up on YouTube yeah, with a few hundred views. And uh, this is something I still want to do myself as a physician as well, you know, being able to document, share patient case studies. And I think uh, having intertwined that art with healthcare really made me feel at home with what I'm doing. This is me at Medical City, just the uniform I wanted to show to people in MDSO. It's uh, the uniform, if y'all are interested, it's uh, khaki pants white shirt, and then they give you a blue clinical coat. If you're gonna be interacting with patients, you have to wear a mask and a face shield as well. Um, but at times, you know, I, I say this to everyone as well, like I pull down my mask sometimes just to smile too. That is a human 
interaction. I'm not just some robot coming in like, hey, what's what's going on? Like, you know, coming out. So uh, really, it's able to connect with them in some way. Um, so yeah, that's, um, once again, if you're interested, then put me down as a reference as well. I'll have my email later. This is me with uh, Dr. James Andrews. He's the number one orthopedic surgeon in the world. He has extensive research. Has been sports medicine doctor for like. NFL teams, Auburn, very big in the Louisiana area as well, Tulane University. Um, so I was able to watch one of his, his uh, ACL pres research presentations, and I got to learn a lot. You know, there were so many doctors sitting next to me, other students as well, and I got to see what this is about. This is, even though they're doctors, although they have the doctor degree, they're still learning from each other. And being a part of a community like that is something I see myself doing, still being a part of teaching. So as you all know, with healthcare, with medicine, it's an ever-evolving, Continu uh, continuum of learning and teaching. If you're learning, you're also given the responsibility to teach to other people as well. You know, when you grow up, maybe when you all have kids one day and want to uh, share what you know, you want to um, share on what you know to your kids, to, to the next generation. And that's applicable everywhere about life as well. So that's that's that. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm still human. <laughs> I don't want you to think that I, I did this all having to sacrifice my social life, that I had to really get up early in the morning, just do my, uh, my schoolwork, go to the hospital, back, sleep, coffee, that's it, <laughs> no. So I still, to this day, still do martial arts. That's me and a professor. I and mean, my friend, we like to train. Uh, I, like, I like how it gets to uh, push me physically, mentally as well. That's me and my family, my two dogs, not like a camera. German Shepherd Bailey and Shih Tzu Cali. I like to uh, go for a run this past, uh, Thanksgiving, I went to uh, run 5K for the turkey trot, and uh, yeah, it was with my family, glad to do it with them. Oh my gosh, glad to be here. Hey guys, this is me. I went back to high school, here at high school, Plano Senior High School. This is where I spent four years, my time, moving back. I was invited to guest speak for the program and uh, in front of uh, about 30 to 60 students were in there. But I think one of the greatest things I I've noticed here and what I think it's applicable to my life is that I'm starting to see things come full circle. Now I was in their very shoes, very curious of what a journey in medical school would look like or just in medicine would look like. I uh, There was a medical student and doctors who came to speak at, at the program when I was a student there and, and now I I'm myself am a guest speaker giving back to those kids to the high school students and just um, yeah doing my part um, I'm just uh, you know I feel like I I've, I've done so much with learning putting myself out there getting involved that now it, I'm in the position to be giving back to my community and I, it feels great it, it, it's something that I like this I, I want to be a part of you know um, unfortunately, not every, not all the, uh, not all the footage of me speaking was was there. I spoke for uh, there. There were two classes I had to speak to, thirty each. Um, so uh, one, for one hour, I spoke, answered some questions, um, and then afterwards, uh, and then I had to do it again. Ten minute break, then do it again. And I was able to see my old professors, old teachers, just wander throughout the halls. And, and just be there, you know. I, I, I had a great time, you know. Um, I think this makes me understand that I, there's so many people who support support me, so many people that I support as well throughout the whole whole journey. Um, there's, there's just a lot, you know. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you really liked it, uh, go ahead and give a like and a comment down below uh, if you uh, on anything that stood out to you or. If, Anything you'd like for me to upload on and, and uh, put on to my channel as well. And make sure to subscribe to my channel as well uh, so you don't miss out on any videos or any projects I have coming out. Um, I had a really great time getting to speak at my high school, being able to see uh, my old teachers, professors, everything like that. And uh, for the future, uh, expect to see a lot more content. I'll be giving a little bit more advice about uh, my college careers uh, and what I'm doing moving forward. So uh, stay tuned in and I'll uh, see you in the next